love with Pat's Two Cents. Reading 1 Corinthians chapter 6. <clears throat> Reading particular scriptures followed by Pat's Two Cents. Now, we're going to start with verse 9 and 10. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners, shall inherit the kingdom of God. I didn't say it. Don't look at me cross-eyed. I just read the word. I see you pulling out your gun. No, no, no. Put the rotten tomatoes back in the fridge. I didn't say it. God did. Mm-hmm. Cramping your style, huh? Pat's two cents real quick. People think they can do these things because they asked Jesus, they asked God to forgive them and they accepted Jesus into their heart. But this says it right here, be not deceived. If you are fornicating, if you are worshiping a man or a woman or money or whatever above God, and anytime, I'm, I'm explaining now, anytime you are an idolater, if your man wants you to spend the day with him and he doesn't want to go to church, and you stop going to church so you can spend time with him, that's idolatry. If your woman wants you to take her across town to the beach, when you know you're supposed to be ushering at church and you go and do it because you want to please her, that's idolatry. Idolatry is not just taking a little figure and saying, oh, oh, I worship. No, no, no. It's worshiping people, worshiping their opinions of you more than God's opinion of you. Now, moving right along. Nor adulterers. Well, we know what adulterers are. Adulterers are people who have sex out of wedlock with someone who's married or someone who's married having sex out of, wed out of wedlock up with a, someone other than their spouse. Now, nor effeminate. Effeminate is another word for a person living a homosexual lifestyle. Hmm. Think on that. Selah nor abuses of themselves with mankind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we won't go into that. But it's another form called sodomy. Nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor... Okay, you got that. So when you are living it, we're not talking tripping into it we're not talking being tempted by it we're talking living it baby that's your address and oh well that's when you are in very 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 serious <laughs> you're in a seriously dangerous position you know the bible says not to socialize not to you know some of you have friends that are living that and you you hang with them and God's saying don't do that that's how much he's against all of it see when you watch movies this is Pat's two cents real quick and then we're gonna go further when we watch movies where they're screwing and doing and wh whoever they want to do it to and they're they're doing extortion and their everything is is violence and 
and I mean, it is it is one of those things where when you watch it, you're like, ooh, ooh, did you see? Did you, ooh, look how he held that gun. Ooh, he sure popped that hole in his head. You know, you're really sitting there getting off on it. It's prayer time, y'all. It's prayer time. When you are comfortable, when you get through committing any of these sins, nothing in you is bothering you. It's like, well, I'm human. I mean, you know, God wouldn't have put these, you know, you, did nothing bothers you? You're not afraid that God could actually punish you? Listen, there's a scripture that says, the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. You're not wise, baby, if you don't fear God. Now, that doesn't mean, Whoa! no, but guess what? You know he's not to be played with. Hmm. All right, let's move down because I'm not done with God's word. <clears throat> 15 through 20. Same chapter, 1 Corinthians 6. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of of Christ and make them the members of an harlot. God forbid. What? Know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body? I'll say it again. Know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body? For two, he saith, shall be one flesh. Verse 17. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Pat's two cents right there. You know what price you were bought with? The blood of Jesus. The shed blood of Jesus on Calvary. Therefore glorify God in your body. And in your spirit. Which are God's. They're God's. Now, if you don't want them to be gods and you don't want God to uh, uh, rule the nest, so to speak, then guess what? Walk away. And I don't mean that lightly. Because even if you don't willfully just walk away, willfully living these lifestyles, in essence, that is what you're doing, is walking away. I know the Bible says no man can snatch you out of my hand, but you can walk out of it. God doesn't hold you captive now. He doesn't hold you prisoner. You come and go as you please. But how far do you want to go? There's a song that says, turn around. Turn around before you've gone down that road too far. Turn around. Jesus is waiting with open arms. Don't go down that road too far. And don't be caught strutting down that road when Jesus is busting through the clouds. You won't be able to say forgive me in time. Because once you know he's there, it's done. 
You're sealed in your fate. And your fate is that of your choice, your making. Which one do you choose? Think about it. 